In the previous lecture, we discussed a concept known as refraction of light and we defined Snell's law. Now let's look at the following example that will deal with applying those concepts. Suppose a single beam of light is traveling in air when it strikes the surface of uniformly thick glass at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the normal. So we have a single beam of light, a single ray of light that is traveling in air. It eventually hits the surface of a uniformly thick glass at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to the normal line that is perpendicular with respect to the surface. Now, if the index of refraction of air is 1.00 and the index of refraction of glass is 1.46, in part A, find the angle of refraction theta in the glass where the angle theta is the following angle. And in part B, find the angle of refraction phi with which the ray emerges from the glass where the angle phi is given by the following angle. So, let's begin with part A. Find the angle of refraction theta inside our glass. So we want to find the following angle theta. So, as a result of the fact that the beam of light travels with a higher velocity in air than in glass, the ray of light will essentially bend inward toward the normal and this angle theta will be less than our 30 degree angle. So to calculate what exactly the quantity of angle theta is, we have to apply Snell's law. So Snell's law tells us the following. We know the product of the index of refraction of air and air and the sine of the angle of incidence theta i. So this angle 30 is equal to the product of the index of refraction of glass and glass and the sine of the angle theta where the angle theta is the angle that we're looking for given by the following degree measure. So. Let's bring all the known values to one side and the unknown to the other side. So, sine of the angle theta, what we're looking for, is equal to n air divided by n glass multiplied by sine of the angle of incidence. So, sine of the angle theta is equal to n air is 1 and glass is 1.46 and theta i is equal to 30 degrees. So 1 divided by 1.46 multiplied by sine of 30 or 0 0.5 gives us about 0 0.342. So now to calculate what the angle theta is, we simply have to apply the inverse of the sine function. So theta is equal to sine inverse of 0 0.342 and that gives us about 20 degrees. So our angle is about 20.0 degrees, which is less than our angle of 30 degrees. Now, let's move on to part B. Find the angle of refraction phi with which the ray emerges from the glass with respect to our normal line. So once again, this line is our normal line. So by the geometry of the following diagram, because these two surfaces are parallel and we have the following straight line, this angle theta is equal to this angle theta. So that basically means to calculate what this angle is, what this phi is, we have to once again apply Snell's law. So now we're looking at the following situation. Now we have our beam of light that is traveling within the glass is essentially leaving the glass and then entering air. And because the speed of light within glass is less than the speed of light within air, that means our angle will essentially, or our ray will essentially refract, it will bend away from the normal. And the angle phi will be greater than the angle theta. So let's see what that means by looking at the following um, 
uh, the following equation. So, an glass multiplied by sine of the angle theta is equal to an air multiplied by sine of the angle phi. So, once again, let's rearrange and solve for sine phi. So, sine phi is equal to the index of refraction of glass divided by the index of refraction of air multiplied by sine theta. Now, the index of refraction of glass and glass is 1.46. The index of refraction of air and air is 1.00. And sine of the angle theta is equal to, well, angle theta was calculated in part A to be 20 degrees. So sine of the angle theta. And this gives us 0 0.5. So now, once again, we take the inverse of the sine function of 0 0.5, and that gives us approximately 30 degrees. So we see this angle phi is equal to 30 degrees. So what exactly is our conclusion? So we see that when our single beam of light travels in air, then travels through the uniformly thick glass and leaves the glass and returns to the air, we see that the direction of the light ray within our uniformly thick glass does not actually change. So the direction of this ray does not change, although its position does change. It's essentially shifted toward the right.